So let's talk about the 2022 Toronto Audio Fest. I focus only on rooms that have caught my attention and I would not talk about rooms that I have already covered in the past. Now, for example, as much as I love the Gershman Avant Guards, I will not talk about them since I've already done it in my past videos. We want something new, exciting, don't we? Another thing I would not do in this video is that I won't criticize anyone's system. Instead, I will only focus on the positives. As someone who is an exhibitor for this year's show, I understand the pain of setting up a room in one day. The first minute I power up my system, I wanted to cry and quit. Finally, just before we begin, I will make two more videos from this audio show. One will be titled uh, something like the hundred thousand, the $100,000 speaker problem. Now the story goes like this, okay? So I walk into Attitudo's room, listen to the PMC top of the line, $100,000 Finestra speaker, told them it sounded like crap, asked them to fix it, and told them I will come back after supper to evaluate it again. So how did that story end? It was genius what they did. The other video I'll be making is what I've learned from this audio show. Why some rooms I find amazing, while others are meh, despite everyone having very capable gear. All right, so let's start. Mm, the Manapan room. Now at this show, I heard whispers of this special speaker from Manapan that blew people away. I knew there was always a lineup for that room, so I showed up at 10 a.m. on Sunday just when the show started. By chance, a subscriber and her super cute daughter also showed up. I would nickname him Mr. Super Cute Daughter. And man, he made me look like a famous movie star when he told me he was a big fan in front of Window. Now, Window, for those of you who don't know, is the owner of Manapan. And he did a great job setting up the whole presentation for the big review. So in the room, there were the Manapan LRS Plus speakers and the special secret speaker. That special speaker is the upcoming Manapan subwoofer. Okay, so no big deal. A triangle looking subwoofer. Sure, high wife approval factor. But how did it sound? Wendell played a few songs, drums and orchestra pieces, and it was impressive. You can hear the top end sparkling, the details. It was okay, but nothing that would blow me away. Then Wendell stopped the music and asked Mr. Super Cute Daughter what he thought of the presentation. That guy probably watched a lot of Thomas and Stereo videos because he was using terms to describe what he heard just like I would. He thought it sounded open, detailed, and had a great low-end extension. Now then Wendell did the big review. The next thing I heard was a big boom sound. That was the sound of Mr. Super Cute Daughter's jaw dropping on the floor. So let me pause here for a second. For those planning to attend any Manapan subwoofer presentations this year, I highly recommend you stop now and just jump to the timestamp below. Skip this whole section completely. The reason is because in your audio journey, there will only be a handful of times you will have this come to Jesus moment. Okay, ready? Wendell said, what we were just listening to was just the subwoofer. The LRS Plus was not even playing. Yes, you can hear sparkling top end details with the subwoofer. Some of you probably are thinking, dude, in what universe does the subwoofer play full range? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Twilight Zone. I meant Manapan universe. Wendell has designed a full range sounding subwoofer that can keep up with his Manapan speakers. Some of you are probably thinking, mm, Thomas, are you sure there's enough bass impact with these little small triangle speakers? Remember a long time ago in another galaxy far, far away, I made a video saying the Pearl Acoustic Sibelius had plenty of bass with a single four inch woofer. And many people did not believe me. Now you start hearing from other reviewers confirming what I said. Well, guess what? I'm telling you right now, there is plenty, I mean plenty of punch with these subwoofers. For those who have heard these Manapan subwoofers, guys back me up and leave a comment. Those who doubt me, 
put in the comments too. If one day you get a chance to listen to these subs and are not blown away, I will feel myself eating broccoli as a form of apology. Now after the show, Manapan sent me a few videos. These are interviews they did with people who just walked out the Manapan room, still recovering from the shock. Our impressions? Yes. Uh, so far, uh, one of the most amazing demos of this show. This technology is absolutely amazing and uh, I think it's the best. I don't know if I can say that, bang for the buck, <laughs> unbeatable. Yeah, it's a very gentle sound and it's very, the price is very accessible for people younger like me. So it's a very, it's very interesting and I'll keep that in mind. So I want to buy something. It's now I'm going to spare you the torture of listening to all of them. I would just summarize them all for you in three words. WTF. Remember I used to say every audiophile should listen to a manapan at one point in his life. Let me add to that now. Every audiophile should experience the manapan subwoofer. Put it on your bucket list. Alright, so let's move on to the triart room. Okay guys, do you even need me to add any commentary? Would you not want to check these out? The first thought that crossed my mind when I stepped into this room was Man, how many years of instant noodles do I have to eat to save up for these? Guess what? Turns out, it is not years, but only months. It is, relatively speaking, affordable. Now, this is a modular design, meaning you can start small and then add pieces to it. You start with a stand mount speaker, and then you can add the horns. You know what? Almost like an audiophile version of LEGO. You just keep expanding it the way you like. Now, how did it sound? Interestingly, it reminded me of the Klipsch La Scala and the avant-garde horn speakers. There is a certain quick decay in the midst that makes the vocal sound very natural. I wonder if that is the horn effect. Not bright, not harsh, very pleasant. The bass was, what, was not what I expected. I was expecting it to punch me in the face, but no, nope, pretty linear. And once again, a lot like the Klipsch La Scala. I wish I can take it home for review, but damn that J man! You know that other Asian YouTuber? He beat me to it, and I saw him loading it into his car after the show. You know, maybe I should drop by his place to listen to it. Anyways, Triart, well done. You might not pick up girls or guys with these speakers, but you will surely impress your audiophile buddies with them. Next, we have the Acora room. The first thing I noticed when stepping into the room was, darn, I can fit my house in this room. At the far end corner, relative to the size of the room, we have this small speaker made of granite. Yeah, you heard that right. Probably the only speaker on this planet made of granite. Surprisingly, the speaker was yeah, able to reach a decent volume with absolutely no distortion. And above all, I don't hear any cabinet noise. Wow, duh. The thing is made of granite. Neutral sounding, transparent, and if you take the time to listen carefully, it is nuanced from the top end down to the base. As I always said, as you move up in the high-end world, audio world, things tend to sound more and more neutral. Now these are pretty neutral. Also, I think they use beryllium tweeters, so it is quite lively. By the way, I got to see the crossover, and despite I don't know anything about crossovers, I still find it looks impressive. I wish I could show you a photo of it, but apparently, if I did, I would have to kill you. So, never mind. Now, I think for those of you who don't want MSG or color in your speakers, who prefer a linear presentation and a very open top end, and who have a budget of a Toyota Corolla, then the Acura speakers are something worthy of your attention. Next, another room that caught my attention was actually the room next to mine. Why was it interesting? You know the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, here, a video is worth a thousand words. So, my understanding is this. You know that gear that looks like it's from Area 51? That is, an, that is an amp, and it's modular. Once you finish choosing your components, they'll make it into the final version, which is the one on display at the back. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but this is what my audio buddies told me. I did not chat with anyone in that room, so I'm not 100% sure. Now, sadly, the only time I was in that room, 
There was no music playing, so I don't know how they sound. Yeah, epic fail on my part. And they were my neighbors. By the way, these Finn speakers? Apparently in Hong Kong, there's a nickname for it. Like post office mailbox. Next, there were these speakers from Coherent. I don't think they are single drivers, but a coaxial design. I saw them in two rooms, and interestingly, they sounded good in both rooms. That is what caught my attention. By the way, if you're looking for a streamer that is customizable and made in Montreal, Canada, my hometown, check out Baitis Audio. I hope that's how you pronounce it. They have won many awards, and as you know, because I've brought an amp to market, whenever I walk into a room that sounds good, I pay attention not only to the speakers, but everything else that is connected to it. That room sounded pretty good. Next, ah, uh, Serving Vega. I remember the good old days when I was still young and still had a lot of hair. Serving Vega was the rock and roll speakers to get for me. For those too young to recognize this brand, if you like a warm sounding speaker with a bass that can punch your chest as hard as Mike Tyson, go and buy a Serving Vega on the used market. As expected, yeah, these Serving Vega had strong bass, and I bet they can play really loud. What was quite surprising was the top end. It was very lively. Think of Focal times 2 level of life liveliness. Hyper sparkling top end, hyper powerful bass. These speakers probably have the ultimate V curve voicing at the audio show. Next, I lied. I said I was not going to talk about rooms that I already talked about in my past video. I do want to give a quick shout out to Santra Hi-Fi Room because I was really impressed with the sound. T plus 8 electronics with Martin stand mount speakers, the sound stage was airy and deep. Loved the sound. Everywhere I walked around in the room, I can feel the speakers filling up the room. Compared to what I heard at the Montreal audio show, I felt this was a level up. Perhaps it is the synergy with the room, who knows. I do wonder if it is also because I like the T plus A sound. You see, the best sounding system I've heard on this Toronto trip was actually not at the audio show. It was at a store called American Sound of Canada. Now, let me take 30 seconds to tell you, the speakers that blew me away was this relatively unknown brand called Franco Sub Sublin. The electronics were all T plus A. The whole system probably was about 120 grand. I have heard many quarter of a million dollar systems over the years at Angie's store, and yet this is my favorite. Guys, if you have 30 grand to spend on a pair of speakers, check out these Franco Serblin. You will thank me, and I accept your donations via PayPal. Another room that caught my attention was a room with these speakers on the floor. I don't know their name. The equipment driving these speakers looks impressive. Now, to be honest, I cannot help but wonder why they decided to design the speakers to sit so low on the floor. As expected, once the music started playing, the center image was higher than one would expect. Now this is a case where what I see does not match what I hear. I cannot help but keep looking at the speakers on the floor and imagine a miniature short person singing in front of me. What I got was yeah, not a short person. And to avoid confusion, I had to close my eyes to enjoy the music. Warm, romantic, and sweet is how I would describe the sound. The best system for background music and for critical listening, it is of course excellent. I think this is a coaxial design, and as I said, the whole system sounded really warm and analog. I think the only system at the show that actually moved my heart. I'm really curious how much of what I heard is due to the turntable. Anyways, two thumbs up. Next, I remember a subscriber telling me one of his favorite room was with the Anthem Amp and Paradigm speaker. So I went looking for it. And the first thing I noticed walking in was, dude, there is zero room treatment. Yet, interestingly, although the speakers were big, there was no boomy bass. Then I noticed a mic in the corner. Ah, room correction. Perfect for lazy audiophiles who don't want to treat their room, or for those who have failed in applying for a permit from their significant other to quote unquote decorate their room with panels. Long live room correction. 
I can understand why that subscriber enjoyed that room. Then I dropped by the Apertura room to see if they were displaying the Apertura swing. Now, I made a video just before the show telling everyone, hey guys, go check this style mount speaker out. It's my favorite 2000-ish style mount speaker. I was happy to have met people at the show telling me the Apertura room was their favorite room. Now, instead of the swing, they were showcasing the Apertura sensor. Now, it is too bad I was so busy, so I, I never got a chance to really listen to them at the show. For those who did listen to them, leave a comment and let me know what you thought of it. Yes, they should have demoed the Cayenne Soul 170i. Okay, so let's end the video with the best room at the show, the Galion and the Lee Song room. Haha, <laughs> of course I'm going to say that. Before we start, let me share with you an email. Okay, this email I got from Glenn, formerly a reviewer for Six Moons and Novo. He took the time to send me an email telling me our room was the best sounding room at the show. This is meaningful because he did it after the show. So unlike Jay, for example, telling me our room was one of the best, so I might buy him food, there was no chance of me buying Glenn's supper for saying that. Now, having said that, I did get comments directly and indirectly from people saying our room has one of the best sound. Now, I say indirectly because those are the people just chatting with each other while they're leaving our room, okay? I'll give you a hint as to why our room sounded great. To treat the room, just the carpet alone. Lee Song spent close to $10,000. I was shocked. I thought it was like $2.99 on special from Walmart. Now, Joking aside, in our room, the main stars were the Galeon TS120 Special Edition with the Lee Song Leonidas Extreme Speakers and the Deckware Tory Jr. with the Lee Song Origin 10 Speakers. Unique to our room, many people were having that come to Jesus moment twice. Not once, like in the Manapan room, but twice. First, those who are familiar with open baffle speakers did not expect the bass from these speakers. I love, I mean, I love, love seeing people's eyes wide open, their mouths wide open, their jaw dropping, their big smile when I play this heavy bass track called Made Us Stronger. It just blew people away. The second come to Jesus moment is when I tell them, you were listening to a 30 watt class AM. I had people telling me before, even with their 300 watt solid state amp, they don't get this kind of impact. Seriously, man, I had people asking me twice to make sure they did not hear me wrong. 30 watts? Are you sure you did not forget a zero and it's 300 watts? I knew the room sounded good because I see many people sitting in our room for up to 30 minutes. Either they were enjoying the music or they stayed because they were enjoying bathing in the light of a famous YouTuber. Of course, we're talking about Loic. He came all the way to grace us with his presence. Jay and Philip, the famous YouTubers too, also dropped by and honored us with their presence. We personally loved it when people stay long and we did not use that old trick to get rid of people. You know, okay, play some classical music and that will get rid half of the room. Also, I see some people coming back four or five times. Finally, our room was always packed. You know great minds think alike? I did exactly what Manapan did and recorded people's reaction. Needless to say, it was all positive. Well, because if they said something bad while I was interviewing them, I would smack them on their head. Now, I will share the interviews on my other Galeon YouTube channel. So that's it. There were many other excellent rooms, but to keep the video short, yeah, I will end it here. Now the show was a success. I heard last year was not that good. I got to meet a lot of you and I felt like a superstar. Man, if I charge $5 for every photo and every handshake I did at the show, I could almost pay for my trip. I think as an exhibitor, I got to see another side of the show. People, I mean, the other exhibitors were super friendly. Even after the show, despite everyone dying of fatigue from three days of no sleep, there was a lot of positive energy when packing up. I don't know if they were happy because finally it was over or they were simply pumped up because of the show. People were joking while packing up. For example, there was this narrow corridor and it can only fit two cards. I had to push my cart a bit faster to overtake someone 
and I heard him yelling at the back, Hey you, you're supposed to honk when you overtake someone. Little jokes here and there, people helping each other out at the elevators, people congratulating each other. It was really nice. Now, I once asked a distributor why she invests in audio shows. It's not like you can make the money back at an audio show. She gave me her business reasoning, which I don't really remember. What I do remember clearly is she told me, an audio show is like a party. We all get together to have fun. Now, I thought she was crazy at the time, but I can kind of understand it now. All right, everyone. See you at the Montreal Audio Show next year.